can you learn Erica Jane slash Mikey's real choreography? It deserves you attention. You don't fuck with it. No. Yeah. Guys, welcome to Bitch Bash Live in New York! The most attractive crowd we've had. Yeah. By far. <laughs> Everyone before was, you know, middling, but this is. This is where the beauty comes to shine. Yeah. People are like, we don't care about going late. We'll get out late. I'm like, I need to be in bed by eight. <laughs> you guys are. But the, the hot people are out late. Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> guys, I'm your host, Danielle Schneider. Wilson. Thank you. We can't thank you enough for coming out to see us. We're and, so excited to be here. And for looking at us in these outfits. And for looking at me with this puff hair. You know, the housewives have never met a great Gatsby party they did not attend and love. They did it, and every time they put those fucking outfits on, I'm like, these bitches. Why do they gotta always do this stupid costume? And now that I have, I have it on, I have to say, it feels right. I love it. Yes. It feels right. Never it looked better, no, never felt more yeah. like myself. This big puff is... <sighs> and guys, everything. I just got like some random tassels. And then, you know, me with... A wig. I love a wig. Danielle, <laughs> you will buy a wig at the drop of a fucking hat for this show. No, Casey's always like, so I think we should do... I got a wig for that. <laughs> Don't even let her finish the sentence. This was $9 on Amazon. <laughs> and you can tell. I said this at the earlier show, but honestly, this is also from Amazon. Of course, it was... I, well, no, actually, April got this today at a Halloween store. Thank you, April. And I will say it is more comfortable than any of the Housewives lines. Than <laughs> Sonia Morgan's fucking red jumpsuit that I wore, which was $500. <laughs> and I couldn't return because I had literally sweat through it in every area. And Countess Luann's jumpsuit, which I bought and had to do two rounds of alterations on. <laughs> More than I did on my wedding dress. Honest, I'm not kidding. You guys didn't see it, but Dan, the crotch was down here. <laughs> on Danielle, it was like, who has a torso like that? Yeah. Luann. <laughs> it was insane. It was like you're, it was for a woman whose vagina lips are a foot long. <laughs> a long-lipped gal. <laughs> With love. Guys, With love. we're in New York, and we're so... Can I ask a question? Where are we right now? Yeah. We don't know. We don't know. Okay. Brooklyn. I thought we were, and Danielle and I went to NYU and have lived in New York for 10 years. What, someone say? Not at the Regency. No, we're not at the Regency. We're not at Boutique. <laughs> Guys, we feel so blessed to be sponsored by the charity Kill All Cancer. So close to our hearts. Yes, they have paid us so much money. Yeah. <laughs> to be here. I hope one day they can donate actual money. <laughs> That'll be a good day. Oh my gosh, Danielle, we're in New York. What's we, going on with you? Well, I came to New York. I haven't been here a long time. And well, I had to do something important while I was here. What's Last that? night I went and saw myself a little show called Hamilton. <laughs> Now, I know you've had some strong thoughts about it. <laughs> and I went, and I was like, okay, I'll keep what Casey says in mind, and I'll keep what the rest of the world says in mind. Just in, uh, to catch anyone up, I am the only person, along with my husband, who did not care for Hamilton. <laughs> and I know 
it's unpopular and I'm probably on the wrong side of history, but go on, Danielle. I have someone. Thanks you know, I have a critical eye, and what can I say? <laughs> Guys, I have to say. <laughs> I have to say, I thought about what Casey said, and I loved it. I fucking loved it. No, I will say that I thought it was fantastic. I liked the songs. I knew the music a little bit, and I had a blast. I was nervous because it was an understudy heavy performance. Everyone I wanted to get an understudy tonight. <laughs> It was fantastic. I will say this, okay. Did it change my life? No. It did not. I, it wasn't like, when I saw Les Mis, it changed something in me. I was like, oh, life is different now. I was 12 and it was my first Broadway show. But I am different today. I was also it. different when I saw Hamilton. I was like, oh, I could write a musical. But I thought everyone was fantastic. I like that they moved furniture as choreography. That was the worst part. <laughs> oh I like love someone that. Someone singing, and in the background, three girls. <laughs> I was into that. I was into it. I was like, that's a creative way to move a chair. I feel like the choreographer was like, I don't know. Just can you grab that and lift it? <laughs> But look how I struggle with the chair. You don't want to see me being like, excuse me, guys. I will say, here's my one complaint. I would like to see women playing the men's parts in those shows. Yes, why can't I be Hamilton? Why can't I be whoever those other people from history were? I, can s I think you can, Danielle. I think if you joined like a middle school historical kind of theatrical production that tours like high schools type thing, Happy you could. To do. I'm not giving away my shot. I'm not giving away my shot. Good, that was very good. Yes, that's my Hamilton. See, we can all do it. Wow. Wow. Wow, no, Casey, tell me, how are you doing? Well, I last night went to see, because I'm an, uh, an old woman, I went and saw uh, Glenn Close in Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> fucking best performance I have ever seen. They gave wow. her a standing ovation in the middle. People just in the middle were like, I'm getting up. It was so good. Feel free at any point to do yeah. that this evening. And thank you. Thank you. I love how the people that are already standing are like, we are fucking standing, bitches. You don't have seats for our show. To all of you standing, I would not stand for a show, and thank you. I will say at the end of Hamilton, they gave a standing ovation. I was like, oh, oh we're doing this. So, but I loved it, but I was just like, we all know it's amazing. Do we have to stand? The worst in the Atlanta Broadway show when you've given so many ovations and then you're like turning to go and you see the actor coming back out and you're like, ah! <laughs> I'm always so afraid they're gonna see I was like getting my coat. <laughs> you pretend you were doing one of these ovations. <laughs> Hello. Um, but Danielle, I have not been well this past week. Um, What's going on? I've had a little incident that I cannot share with close friends, but I, of course, can share with all of you. I quickly will say, Danielle, I do not consider myself someone who discusses the scatological, and I find people who do to be base. <laughs> Truly base people, but something happened to me that is un unsettling, <laughs> to say the very least. What happened? Danielle, I didn't think, I wasn't gonna tell this, but I, know. I am going to. I know. I've had a flu, guys, I'm gonna make it quick, and it is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> but I lived it, so you all can hear it, okay? <laughs> guys, last week I had a flu, terrible flu, and I don't like water. So, I Which hadn't is, been drinking it. Diet Coke for life. Yes. I know, but you don't get, but, but you don't get to not like water. Yeah, I don't like Hamilton, and I don't like water. <laughs> Again, two unpopular choices with most people. Yes, Hamilton is all, some people's Hamilton is blood. the water of shows. <laughs> and 
okay, so I hadn't been drinking water because I was so sick. My doctor prescribed me Zofran, which I was taking, and I finally took it for a couple days. I finally got myself out of bed to be with my son. And I, you know when you're so sick, you're like, I, I think I see a crack of light. I think I'm back with humanity for once. I'm like coming downstairs, and again, don't like to talk about the scatological. Apologies in advance. This is a trigger warning for anyone. So I'm going downstairs. I'm playing with my son, Danielle. I go to the restroom, and there's no other way to say this. I know, I know, this is so disgusting. <laughs> okay, guys, <laughs> I, went, <laughs> I went to the restroom, and I had what can only be described as a bowel movement uh, that was half inside my body, half out for six hours. <laughs> now, well, let me explain. <laughs> There's no explaining necessary, actually. It's half in my body, half out. I'm in excruciating pain. I'm, people are, I've lost a lot of people, I feel it. I feel it, I know are it. Are still here? I think we're still here. Again, I had to go through this. I know, it's not, it's so unpleasant. It's so upsetting. I was in excruciating pain. Nothing would go any direction. So I'm lying on the ground. We have to send my son away. <laughs> My husband cannot go to work. I'm screaming and sweating in the bathroom and I yell to my husband, call an ambulance! He calls my doctor, I get her on the phone, he slides the phone under and I'm crying. I go, I have, this is pain beyond childbirth, okay? And she's like, I said, I have to go to the hospital. And she goes, Casey, don't go to the hospital. Quote, it's just gonna be a mess. When a doctor says not to go to the hospital, you know you're dying. <laughs> she goes, you're on your own with this. This is up to you now to fix this problem. And it's a problem. Okay, it's quite a problem when you can't walk. So I hobble out of the bathroom with towels around me. I manage to change locations. Never let them take you to the second location. <laughs> I've been in bathtubs. I've been every area of my house. I'm like a dog when it dies and you run off to another area. So at points, I'm praying. I'm not kidding. I'm crying, sweating, and praying to my dead grandparents, to my mother, to my parents' friends who have passed. I'm like, if anyone can take a second and deal with this. I love how it's just like, they're all up there and they're, you know, being like, the Middle East, Trump, what are we going to do? And then they're like, Casey's got an any Audi. <laughs> Let's go fix this bad boy. I said, look, I know everyone's busy, but I'm in a situation here. Okay, I cannot leave my home. I can't stand up. Bottom line, I asked for an angel and an angel came to me. My doctor, this being LA, you can have anything sent to your house. We got something called the IV doc. And a woman, a nurse comes over who gives you IV fluids. And <laughs> it's for hungover people. <laughs> and, <laughs> And she told me it's just like a bunch of like single male celebrities use it all the time. <laughs> so this nurse, Crystal, appears and she's like hooking up my IV bag again, half in, half out, continually. I'm in the bed, my nurse, my doctor said, just have her give you all the fluids. And my brother had suggested that my husband go to Rite Aid and get an enema. I know this is, this story's taking way too long. I'm just gonna finish it. It is. Danielle. Crystal, registered nurse, is hooking up my IV bag. My husband has come home from work holding an enema. And again, my husband and I have not even passed gas in front of each other in our lives. So this is, we've jumped quite a leap <laughs> here. And he just looks at me and he looks at Crystal, fiddling with the IV bag. And he says, Crystal, if I give you $200, will you give my wife an enemy? <laughs> Which is like poetry. Like, I feel like if you renew your vows, I'm just going to be like, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today. Crystal, will you give my wife an enemy? <laughs> Crystal looks up, and it's a big ask. I think we can all agree. And Crystal said, you know what? Yes, I will. I got on all fours, and a woman named Crystal was an angel. Yes, sent from heaven. I had met her five minutes earlier. She's listening to this podcast when it comes out, and I, she said I could use her name, and what she did for me was heaven sent. And what we went through is more intense than I, if anything you and I have gone through. No. My husband I, I don't feel like I know you. <laughs> Not the way Crystal does. I don't know myself. All I know is Crystal got me up and out of. And I dedicate this show to Crystal. Wow. 
I think what we learned today is that you guys, no matter where you are, what you're going through, prayer works. I think that's what we are. I wish I hadn't told that, but here we are. Um, guys, so much has gone on with the housewives lately and all our favorite Bravo shows. Oh my gosh. You know, it, it's been a real year. And so, and it's been a year in general, I yeah. feel like. And it's just fucking started. <laughs> now, I Our think next every, guest might be very controversial, and I'm dead serious about that. Very controversial guest. Also, just know, Casey and I think have been outwardly, we've talked about this on the podcast, we are, we are and were and will always be Hillary Clinton supporters. Um, we have Mark. No, this is not a political forum. No, we don't do politics. Um, and so some of you may be angered by our next guest. And I was, frankly, when he came out earlier tonight. Yeah, but get past that. Because this person, for whatever you may feel about him, is a huge Housewives fan. So it's gonna, you know, a lot of emotions might come up, and we hate him as much as you do. But let's give him a chance, because he loves the Housewives. Here to discuss all cities, all seasons. Please welcome our president, Donald Trump. Donald J. Trump. Wow. Here, this is your I microphone. wouldn't say he got a rousing applause. Thank you, darling. Thank yeah, you not very a lot much. of support here for you, Donald. What a tremendous introduction. Always met. Always met with stone silence. Much yeah, people like, don't care for you at all. No, not at all. No, no. The way Lisa was met at the pool party yes. in the preview. <laughs> Lisa Renna. Lisa it's true. Renna. No that, good, Lisa. You got the no good. You got the same stony silence that she got from Kyle when she walked in. Kyle that. looked at her. I mean, that's Kyle is the American people, and I am Lisa Renna. It's true. You're also it's sort of like you, you know darling. when um Thank you. Thank okay, you, darling. I never Thank thought you. I'd shake your Thank hand. Thank you. No. Thank you. Okay. You're gonna see this later on no. Saturday Night Live, no. so Mr. Trump, uh, President Trump, you know, I feel like you're getting a reception a bit like we all felt about Dorit and PK. When they walked in juggling two babies she had never carried before. She's never seen one of those babies. One of those babies she's never even seen. I mean, my favorite clip with Dorit is she holds the baby. She's like, here's the baby, like it's, like it's a Fabergé egg. And then... In the next cut, you see the nanny holding the baby immediately in the background. Did anyone catch that? That that baby was in half a shot. But here's the point. Dorit and PK. I call him the PK broiler. The PK broiler. This guy, let me tell you something about these two. Every time you talk to them, it's like you're about to go into a threesome. They are baiting you into a threesome. Their psychological takedown at that dinner. Remember that tit yes. that dinner? Yes. Um, Lisa Rinna about her father's death. And I think that's what broke Lisa. I think Renna was on. I think Renna was there. <laughs> she was on the right track. But like Apocalypse Now, she went to that dinner and she cracked. Dorit Broker. And who is that weird, the weird guy who's like the, a uh, character? Elliot <laughs> Like Elliot. Elliot Mintz. Yes. The publicist. A man. The pu I think he was like Paris Hilton's publicist back in the day. That's and right. And he was. He used to be John Lennon's publicist. He used to be a human being. That's no why John him. Lennon. John Lennon hired someone to shoot him because he was his publicist. He was like, I can't be around this guy. Donald. I can't be around this guy. Dark. I can't be around this guy anymore. Donald, so again, we don't want to get into politics. It's too inflammatory. It's not politics. Okay. There's nothing political about blowing away John Lennon. Now, you said that Lisa Rinna, she's just, she's got an obsession, it seems, like, with, with Kim's Kim sobriety, even though she sort of passed it along to Eden. What? He, she had, it's like a virus. <laughs> it's like an Ebola of judgment. So Eden, she passed it on to Eden. Eden took it on. And then my favorite statement ever made, I'm sober, I'm completely sober, except when I'm taking Xanax, hydrocodone, Adderall, Ativan. I'll tell you, you should add yourself into a van and take yourself to a hospital, Eden. Because, but here's the Lisa also, you know, and she's such a happy marriage with Harry and his blueberry pies. 
And how many pies? How many different Harry Hamlin pies are there? And does he make a good strawberry rhubarb? That's the true test of a pie maker. The true test is a strawberry rhubarb because you have to balance. You have to balance the strawberry and the rhubarb because the rhubarb is so bitter. Isn't that right? I hear you, sister. I hear you. Now, what do you think about Erica Jane this season? I love Erica Jane. Erica Jane's living in her own self. And I gotta say something. A lot of people judge Erica Jane. They judge Erica. Really? A lot of people say, Erica Jane, she married this older guy, and she's a, that's the whole thing, right? They all portray her as a gold digger. But let me tell you something. She's got a beautiful cop son who's serving the Los Angeles Police Department. Pasadena. He's a hero. Yeah. Pasadena, Los Angeles, who cares? I have changed the laws so that police can police anywhere they want. He could go to Pasadena, Orange County, doesn't matter. And it's very important, very important. She's, she well, worked as a waitress, but she loves that man, and I know it. They love each other. And you told me backstage, they love each other. genuinely, <laughs> President, that you got tears in your eyes when you were watching her sing in, in Greece. When she was singing in Greece, first off, genuinely. I thought for sure, for sure she was going to fall off the cliff. I did. I was. I, I, she I was honestly gonna, was like, thought, I'm petrified for this her. This is it. We're gonna, this is the last of Erica Jane. She's going to tumble down the cliff. And Kyle's I was like, not going to know how to get back to the United it's true. States. And I was worried that Mikey was just going to fly off a cliff after her. Absolutely. Like, no! Tremendous, tremendous. But you know, Erica, she got up and she sang and she was in her bliss. And I did. I teared up. I legitimately teared up during that episode. Teared I legitimately teared up. I legitimately tear I tear up. Listen, I tear up at Vanderpump. <laughs> what is Schwartz doing? Can someone tell me? What is Schwartz doing? You want a little inside? I went out drinking with Schwartz. This is true. I went out drinking with Schwartz, Katie, and Sandoval. And I'll give you a little deep cut. Sandoval's a big Star Trek The Next Generation fan. That's where we connected. We connected there. And Ariana's great. I gotta say, Ariana gets a very bad rap, okay? I know she takes sketch comedy seriously. I understand. I know she takes it so seriously, but I'll tell you something, they're good people, they're good people. And, but I'll tell you, Schwartz that night was hitting on a female friend of mine. I've really? never liked him. So all I'm gonna say, excuse me, get her out of here. And all I'm gonna say, Schwartz is very unhappy, and Katie, I'm sorry, she's abusive. She's abusive, she's verbally abusive. And she's unhappy, and she's unhappy. And I feel for her, I feel for Katie because Katie's clearly unhappy like I am. And as a result, Katie shouldn't be getting married because her marriage is a path away from her problems. And that is a very dangerous thing. Well, wow, I feel like this might be the first applause you've gotten yeah, in, I feel in like front of this crowd that you'll ever get. I wish they asked me these questions in the debate. <laughs> This should be your next State of the Union address. Yeah. It's, it's going the only to be. time you've ever made sense. Yeah. I still do not like looking at you, actually. And spoken any truth. Now, wh wh do you watch all the seasons? You said you were going back through New York alone. I just recently started rewatching New York. You seem to have a lot of time on your hands. Yeah. I do. I don't well, recently I became very successful. <laughs> And so I no longer have to move improv show to improv show. I can spend most of my time at home. And I have all my entertainment. I, when I'm in the Oval, when I'm in the West Wing, or when I'm in the residency, I wander around, open robe, <laughs> nothing else on. No. And I wander room to room, and I have the different seasons of Housewives playing in each room so I can watch the different seasons. And so is it no longer called the Lincoln bedroom? It's like the Vanderpump that's room. That's the Vanderpump bedroom. The summer house room is now where the Oval Office used to be. Abreski. Yeah. Summer, I want to say something about Summer House. Timber Creek Lodge. Summer You're House. You're watching Summer House? 
I enjoy, I, you know, I'll say this. I've never seen people drink giant bottles of <laughs> Grand Cruz of Rosé like that. I almost threw up when they said they went through 75 <laughs> bottles. Did anyone catch that? They said they went through 70 bottles of Rosé? That makes me want to throw up now. And because there's a point at which Rosé, without a little bit of sparkling water, makes you sick. And it's true. And I've drank a lot of rosé in my day. It's the one gift I've instructed my manager to always have waiting for me at any event. It's in my rider. And yeah, do you watch New Jersey as well? I watch Teresa Comes Home. And you know who's coming back? Danielle. R -r I know. Danielle Staub. Danielle Staub. Matriarch to matriarch. <laughs> Or as she said it, matriarch to matriarch. Wow, your knowledge that, runs very deep. I'm a deep cut, baby. And let me tell you, <laughs> I've been rewatching New York. And you see Ramona, and I have to say, it's very sad because, you know, they had a wonderful family dynamic as a family. They really did. They loved each other as a family, but the marriage was falling apart. And I told Ramona this recently, no joke, <laughs> at the Countess's Christmas party. I was there. I'm not kidding you. He's and not kidding. Ramona actually came up to me and she said, what do you do for a living? And I said, I'm Donald Trump. I'm running for president. <laughs> And I kid you not, Ramona said, I'm voting for him because he's going to build that wall and keep those immigrants she out. She said that? No. She did. No. I'm not joking. She really did say that. <laughs> she really said that. She goes, she went, I like him because he's going to build that wall and he's going to keep the immigrants I out. I wish somebody would fucking build a wall and keep her the fuck out from me. <laughs> you know, it is... It's... And Ramona, and I'll tell you about Ramona... Ramona said to me, she's, I said to her, Ramona, I said, I have tears in my eyes. And I did. <laughs> I, I had tears that. in my eyes because she's so happy without Mario because I said, I'm renewing myself. And she immediately lit up and went, renewal? <laughs> and I said, I'm renewing myself. And she's, I said, but I watched those old episodes and I know you and Mario did love each other. And she went, we did, but we grew apart. And we grew apart and I'm so happy now because I'm single and I'm living my life. And Did then she, she hit on you? No, she complained to me about how she spent three hours at the Apple store with her sister <laughs> trying to get access to her iCloud photos. <laughs> then we both decided to leave the party at the same time in an LA elevator. I yelled at her going, just show me your phone and I guarantee you I can find the pictures. <laughs> I got on her phone, they were right there. So simple. And I said, Ramona, you're an idiot. They're right here. And she goes, I can't believe that they wouldn't do that at the Apple store. And I said, it's probably your attitude. And that's a true story. Did you really say that? I really said that and she went, oh, stop it. And we said goodbye to each other. And I said, I love you, Ramona, because here's the key to meeting a housewife. Whether you like them or not, when you meet them, tell them they're the only one you identify with that everyone else is terrible, and they'll immediately spill the beans on anything you want. That's the secret. That's the secret. Wow, what a response you're getting. Oh, wow. You know what? We're going to keep uh, the president out for just a little bit longer, but we wanted to tell you guys. Yes. We have a mic here if, and only if, Woo! you feel in your heart you have a story that the whole audience deserves to hear. And you feel that you are sober enough to judge that story. <laughs> and that you'll tell it in a playful, brief way. Come on up, please. Don't let us deter you. We're just joking. Uh, if you want to come to this mic, just get in line and we're going to, we'll kind of hear from you. Microphones and... right over there. <laughs> we have someone right now. Come on up. Hi. Hi. Ladies, love you. Donald. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very no, much. No, no one said they loved you. Donald, Thank I you. don't love you, but the impression is wonderful. Thank you, Ivanka. <laughs> That's not Ivanka. Oh, my God. Thank you. I'm sorry. I was attracted to her. <laughs> <laughs> that is a huge compliment. Um, so, Brazilian Andy Samberg? Yes. This is Andy Cohen's boyfriend. Everyone, is, he talks about him in his book. So, since I was in the first grade, I've been attracted to gay men. We all are. And 
Brazilian Andy Samberg is my first grade boyfriend. <gasps> oh, wow, that's great. Wow. That's huge. Unbelievable. Wow. I love it. And you're quite a young, a young gal, so. What good are you for in Andy. second grade? <laughs> I teach second grade, but yeah. Exactly, so you're in second grade, I'm psychic. <laughs> Thank you for this. Thank you. And uh, Jesus Christ, Andy Cohen was at my wedding. <gasps> <gasps> wow. Wow. Andy now, Cohen did you at your let, wedding. Not did you what, let him walk down the aisle? I would have just been like, take over. So. Yeah, I would have been like, Dad, move the fuck away. <laughs> well, well, I married someone named Andrew, and he knew he was not the most important Andrew in the room. Uh, I mean, he, he needed to know. Thank yeah. you for that. Thank That's amazing. Thank you. Beautiful story. One more. One more. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> One of the great gays, Andy Cohen. Hi there. Hi. So while we're on the topic of Ramona... Can you get right into that yes, mic? Yeah. Right into the mic. Yes, thank you. So while we're on the topic of Ramona... I love her. My old coworker happened to spend the night with her in a New York hotel room, met her at Towel. Then she flew him out to L.A., I believe, when he was in San Diego. And they had a night of passion together. Completely true. And this was all, mind you, this was like a year and a half ago when things were very rocky with Mario. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they were not fully out divorced Mario. yet. Oh, no, it is Mario, Mario isn't it? Mario. In the accent, Mario. You're right. It's Mario. It's Mario. Um, <laughs> thank you. Donnie. <laughs> wow. Wow. Thank you. I'm so glad she's, I'm so glad she's being fulfilled. Yeah, well, he, was, he was in his mid-twenties. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Thank you. Huge. Absolutely huge. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Okay. I'm going to tell you my Can story. you just pull that Get mic? up to yeah, that I'm microphone. Right okay. Does that work? We're good? Come forward. I'm here. Yeah. There you okay. go. All right. First, Penny Hearts is my hero, but that's oh. just, we're moving, we're moving on. But my one true love. Thank you. All right, I'm going to tell you what happened in this story, and then I'm going to tell it really quickly, but I recently FaceTimed with Dorinda. Unbelievable. I've done yes. a lot of cocaine with her. I have... I have uh, no I've done drugs cocaine. were had, but I would have welcomed them. Um, I'm going to tell you very quickly, because it was a long story. So now that you're here, I'm going to tell you, I was at the uh, No Band, No Wall protest down in Battery Park City. If you saw yeah. it, you I respect your right to protest. Yes. Yeah, you are terrifying me, to be honest. Okay. Um, I, I was there with a friend, also a friend of the pod, and uh, out of the corner of my right eye, I see someone coming towards me. I see her and her eyebrows, and I go, Jen, that is Dorinda's daughter. <laughs> and I turned to her, oh, you, and I was like, do you, do you recognize her? She goes, no. So she starts walking past me. My moment has passed. I turn to my friend, she is screaming, Hannah! Now, my friend has a semi-famous like famous boyfriend. I'm like, you hate when people do her that? Why are you doing this? She goes, I don't know. I don't know what I just did, but you better buck up because she's coming. I'll tell you later in the bathroom. Uh, and, she, and she goes, you better buck up because she's coming this way. And I'm like, I'll tell you later. And so she, he comes. I'm telling a story. I'm telling a story. Okay. And so she comes over. She goes, do I know you? And I go, no, big fan of your mom. Don't know you at all. My friend just like said your name. Anyway, she was lovely. She was there by herself. We talked, whatever. She I was think there that, by herself? She was there by herself. Did you talk to Hannah's eyebrows? They were, uh, could not be missed. Like, I'm proud of her They're for sentient. going by okay, herself. Okay, so then I think that she's getting ready to leave and I'm saying nice to you, sir. She goes, you know what? We should FaceTime my mom. <laughs> Unbelievable. And I was like, yes, of course we should FaceTime your mom. Yeah. She FaceTimes her one. She denies it. I'm like, it's okay. It's okay. She goes, no, I'm going to call her. She calls her. She puts on speaker. She turned to answer. She goes, Hannah, I'm eating chocolate. What do you want? <laughs> I love Dorinda. I love Dorinda so much. If only she would drop John. Yeah. She needs to drop John no, because well, John is no good. All right. Don't get political John about no my good. story. Okay. And John does my suits. John I, does your suits. John does all my suits. He cleans all my suits. That's sad. That's sad. Sad. How That's you sad. Sad. Don't okay. try to do my material, dear. <laughs> all right. All right. Anyway. 
Anyway, so I'm going to speed it up. Anyway, so we FaceTime with Dorinda. She was lovely. She was nice. We hang up, and I'm just like, thank you so much. It was amazing. And she goes, you know what? We just always see Carol and Ramona being so nasty and cold to their fans that whenever I meet someone that's, like, cool, you know, I just, like, try to do this. And Carol and who? And Ramona. Sorry, I'm speaking really uh, fast. And Ramona. So she was basically saying that they see Ramona and Carol being nasty. So when wow. they meet normal people. Thank wow. you for that. Yeah, okay, that's amazing. It. That's an amazing story. <laughs> and Dorinda's so kind. She's such a good open. She's a good soul. I think so, too. I think Dorinda, you know, actually at the Christmas party, she didn't want to show up until the cameras were gone. Okay. You know that? No, I Dorinda love Dorinda. is a gem. I love Dorinda. Who I doesn't agree. love Dorinda? Except I think that they get too drunk at dinner. Cocaine, yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, so I was there the evening. I've posted this on the Facebook group, but I, it's worth repeating because... R.I.P. Yes. First of all, I will produce your show about Dorinda. I work in theater, and I will produce it. I believe Thank you in so much. Thank you. We, Second we, will all, write, we have a musical number all ready to go. <laughs> Second of all, Casey, I believe I agree with you with Hamilton. Thank you so sorry, much. Sorry, people. Um, third... No, it's hard. Third of all, um, I was there the evening of Tommy Toon's concert at Cafe Carlisle with before the, after the Bethany and Countess. Who could forget that Tommy Toon? Uh, Magical night. That being said, I went up to the Countess because she walked in in a white suit and well, she was the only one in a white suit. And um, when I spoke with Tom, who was sitting with her, the sweetest guy ever, except he touched my ass when I walked away. You know, whoops, but it wasn't. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't. I know Tom very well, and it wasn't. But during the Tommy Tune performance, to which, you know, Luann was saying, Tommy's a friend, Tommy's a friend, Luann was making an interactive concert, which it was not. It was Cafe Carlisle. Much like some audience members. <laughs> yes. Sorry, like me right now. I know, I'm um, kidding. But um, to one point when she's like, sing another one, Tommy. Like, darker, deeper. It's deeper than in real life. Sing another one, Tommy. Thank you. You're bringing flashbacks. Not really. Don't, don't touch my ass right now. I'll be very, you know, confused. I'll tell that story. Um, <laughs> and um, Tommy Toon, whoever is in theater and knows Tommy, said, shut up, Countess. <gasps> Wow. So right. Thank you. Not as great as any so other. No, it was great. Thank no, you. Thank, was, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank that you was for wonderful. Me, and I love you both. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. President. Absolutely. You made a comment to me backstage that you thought Luann's, uh, when Luann was saying like that uncool stuff, you thought. When she says, don't be all, why can't you be cool? Don't be all uncool, right? We all remember that. And there's that. an incredible video. If you go on Bravo online, you can see a great actor named Anthony Atamanek. Read that. It's on Bravo. You've seen the video. You know the truth. And, but my thing is that the true sleeper line from that scene is when they're saying, well, are you worried about all these men running around the house at all hours of the night? And she goes, not really. <laughs> that is, so I was at her house one time before, and these are true stories. This is, these are these true are stories. These are true, true story. stories. I am not making these stories up. I'm not, I really am not. Not a joke. Tom greeted me at the penthouse. He had a lovely pink polo he on. literally made to find a man who played Trump who has been to Housewives houses. Of course, Amazing. of course. Yes. And he had a gin and tonic. We go in to the kitchen and of course there's the Countess in all her glory. And she says, what do you want to drink? And I said, I'll have some rosé. And she went, rosé all day. <laughs> and, uh. Which is so insufferable. But then we were at the, we were at the, she was at the fridge and I said to her, do you think that there's a time do you believe in the idea of not drinking rosé off-season? And I kid you not, live to me in the kitchen, she turned without missing a beat and went, not really. Not really. And I mean, it's like as if she has some sort of Tourette because her whole body goes, and she did sing the first three lines. She... I can't, I'm not joking. She went, money can't buy your class. Elegance is learned, my friend. Elegance is earned. Oh, yeah. Thank you. She could not not find a flat wow. note in that song. 
I think uh, it's time to bid our president to Jill. Thank you and very I... much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, Thank you so this much. is Anthony Antamanik, so and he's a genius. Anthony Antamanik. Anthony Antamanik is an amazing chocolate farmer. Anthony, thank you. Thank you. He, um, he did Donald. I mean, like he's amazing. He's a hilarious thank you, comedian. Anthony. And Anthony is wonderful and has actually been doing uh, Donald on behalf of the Clinton campaign leading up to the election, and he is the best. And thank you all for yes. suffering through a Trump. I know we have to suffer through the real Trump, but we just wanted Trump to talk about the housewives tonight. Felt really great. Thank you, Anthony. Yes. Hi there. Hello. Well, first, I just want to say thank you again for representing women at the march and Planned oh, Parenthood. Oh, great. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. So I have two stories. I'll be very quick. Once um, I was out west and ran into the Countess. Okay. She rode the bus with the rest of us. Shocking. <gasps> uh, my, my, my poor husband. What's who, that now? I know. My poor husband, who I, I brought here tonight, was singing Money Can't Buy You Class yeah. to her. I don't think she liked that too much, but she invited us out to a bar when she was still with Jacques. What? And Based off this bus ride? She, she was like, come girls, we're going to be at this bar. Wow. And I a so lot of worrisome. Men. And you seem very nice, but it's worrisome. Right? It is. Because you I do. I felt stalkerish. I know. Well, it's almost it's just nice. like, because, you know, you just meet people. We all meet people on buses. I have never once been like, come out to a bar. <laughs> So we maybe it's to, friendly. I'm scared of it. We went to the bar. Uh, she did not recognize us at that point, which was <laughs> super what depressing. What an awkward, like, remember us from the bus? And <laughs> no recognition, but the men love the Countess. Oh. The men at okay. that bar were all about Countess Luann. So applaud her for that. Yes. But... Yeah. My second story is um, I've been to Watch What Happens Live many Can times. Can you come closer to the mic? Thank Sorry. You. So at Watch What Happens Live, they really do encourage you to drink. They love when you're really shit face. So um, my best friend and I got a little too shit face and were in the bathroom and ran into Todd's mom, R.I.P. And we were, I know, sorry. But all of a sudden... <laughs> Queen Phaedra walked in. And I said, your booty looks beautiful. You look beautiful. Congratulations. And she said, girl, you look great, too. Wow. Very and nice. And then when I was down in security waiting for my cab, her and Apollo, again, RIP, showed up and said, you were the two drunk girls upstairs. Let's all get a photo together. And they And walked. he said, and please meet us at a bar after. And as that happened, and Candy and Todd walked by, and I screamed, no scrubs. And just... <laughs> thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you, God bless. Wow. So well, we'd love to blow through the rest of you. If you... Going fast, I'm yeah. going fast. Um, it just, uh, I, a connection that you'll trust because we trust everyone. Oh, we trust everything. Mm -hmm. Um, Carol Radzivell is, uh, flirting with a run for city government. <laughs> wow. Here's the thing, I'm mixed, and thank you, and I, I know after her successful city council, or no, excuse me. Apartment. Uh, apartment, uh, what was it? Apartment, co-op board. Condo board, representative. She's climbing the ranks, and I do want women in office, so I applaud it. But on the other hand, maybe she'll have a. I mean, <laughs> quiet, Radzville. I'm exactly. for it. I'm Thank for you it. For that. I'm all right. for it. I'm all I, about Radzville. You just tip that I only have one boot to Great. stand on. Great. Great. Boots on the ground, one boot. That's perfect. Please. My husband manages a spa in Lower Manhattan. It has been frequented by many a housewife. It has been featured on the show. Oh. And I will just say that Aviva did remove her leg. <laughs> One We're boot. into some, like, base journalism now. I know exactly what spot you're talking about now, and thank you for that information. If you ever wow. want to come, just let me know. I will. I, I do want like to come. To. Thank you. Yes. And then you can tell the tale. 
So I just want to say I turned 30 last week, and this is my hashtag year of Penny. Oh, good, good, good. Thank you for everything, Casey. Um, so I just want to say my whole life, so my name is Kyle, also. Oh, hi, Kyle. Hi. hi. And by the way, you have the length of hair that Kyle should have. Yes. Can I tell you, I tried to go and it do looks, a hair... It looks so good on it you. It looks amazing on you. So I just want to say, my whole life, it was like, this woman in Dunkin' Donuts was named Kyle, and we just thought it was beautiful, and you are going to be named Megan, and then you were Kyle, because everyone hated Megan. So then, this last couple of years, my mom was like, well, there was that Kyle Richards. She was a child star. So I'm just having this, like, identity crisis. If I was or was not named after Kyle Richards. Were you? Do you think you were? It sounds like I'm possibly. I'm thinking I, as she might have had an influence. <laughs> wow. wow. That's great. And I own it. Whatever. Yeah. And you're wearing a very Kyle top as yes, well. Yes. Well, all shoulders thank all you. the time. Thank you for that. Happy birthday. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Representing the gay. Yes. <laughs> she holding up his arm. <laughs> so, so one night, so first of all, my name is Carrie. I'm like Carrie from the Real Housewives of Dallas, but I owned it first. <laughs> but one night in Tribeca, I walked in like a moth to a flame to Ms. Mariah Carey. It was like you were called in. You guys... Seriously, it was like all of a sudden I was like in ninth grade. I'm no. listening to Vision of Love in my head. No, she sent for you. She First sent all, for you. Hello, Shira. Shira's here, right? Yes. 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 Hi, Shira. Are you well, not, 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 not the lighthouse. Not my sister in law. Not the sister in law. Another fan named Shira Weiss. Yes. yes. So, so I, walked into, I walked into the bubble lounge in Tribeca. There's Mariah Carey. I walk in, and my husband Charlie back there, he has a Groupon. He is like fumbling with a Groupon. Can't, don't have time. Yeah, I can't. Not tell in front that. of Mariah, Charlie. So, Not in front of Mimi. Wait, so, don't take that Groupon. So I, out. Wa I walk over to Mariah. She looks at me like, okay, here we go. Here we go. And I say to her, Mariah, I'm a New Yorker. I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm going to do it. I sing to her. I don't have a good voice. I don't have a good voice. Wow. But I say to her, go to, I say, I, 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 I sing from something from a new album. I say, go to meet me on your contacts. Press delete. She gets up. She gets up from her stool, from her uh, bench. She was probably a on a change lounge. You guys. Always. Oh, wait, oh wait. And this is the day that she and Nick announced their divorce. Great timing for you Great to go timing. up and sing. Mar Mariah walks around, hugs me, and is like, hi, I'm Mariah. I'm like, I know. <laughs> she is so nice, so pleasant. She's like, oh, uh, I'm like, Mar Mimi. Mimi, can I get a picture? She's like, darling, they'll think we're in a brothel. I'm like, Mariah, what would two gay men be doing in a brothel? She's like, I have no idea, darling. But she was, she was the nicest, nicest, Aww, nicest wow. person. That's Thank nice. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Wow, guys. Well, we have a little something for you. We have a little, a little something. pop of color for you. In case you run into Mimi again, oh, you're welcome. For your bravery. Yeah, that was a good story. Hi. Hi. So super timely, because this happens within the gates of Cota de Casa. Oh. It's not really gossip. That's but okay. I, th I know <laughs> More Scott, observational? <laughs> Scott Dunlop. A little better than you know Nev Shulman. Wow. And uh, Scott Dunlop is... Oh, I know. Yeah. The grandfather of the Housewives franchise, it was his idea to do Orange County. Yeah. Exactly. Because he lived next door to Gina Kehoe. Yes. So this he's happened. A on all the shows. In, in the he is the nicest, non creepiest way, so prefacing this. It happened in his hot tub in Cota de Casa. You are in Scott Dunlop's hot tub? I have uh, family friends, family friends. Um, okay. So I know him and I was just, I found out he ideated the show and I was like I feel like I need to thank you for a huge portion of my life <laughs> <laughs> and I felt like you guys would appreciate I that. really did. did he take the compliment he 
he was or is he like, like I've created a monster that's like, gotten out of my control oh my god you watched that that was his reaction yeah he's like you seem like a dignified person <laughs> thank you for that I appreciate it wow I <laughs> what get up here We're hearing that this man dated Sonia Morgan. Wow. Were you on the show? You look familiar. It's on. No, it was just a really slutty four months. It was... She's a queen. We would all be I know. lucky. Like, it's a lot of energy. It's a lot up here. A lot of energy oh, yes. up here, yeah. It's a lot different from the basement of Cipriani, you know? A lot of what? <laughs> I said it's a lot different from the basement of Cipriani where she likes to take us. <laughs> wow. wow. So you were part, were you on the show? What, ju- I mean, for just like one of the dates and then my family found out and then we cut it off. But you were on the show, am I wrong? Only for one episode. Yes, I recognize you. <laughs> wow. You know, Sonia has a taste for luxury, and luxury has a taste, taste for, for me, she says. I mean, you are Sonia's type to a T. You're a gorgeous gentleman, a younger you gentleman. You are younger than a How t- did you get, tell us everything, start talking. Um, so we bought a table at a charity event, and we had to split the table, and then it, we ended up splitting it with her, and then her Who's group. Who's we? My family and her family. Okay, well, okay. she doesn't have a family anymore. But... <laughs> Come on, she's fine. That's she's a low right. blow. She has interned too. Someone told us boots on the ground from the show before. She pays in fruit <laughs> and pickles. And pickles. <laughs> and pickles. Okay. So, so then we ended up just meeting at this charity event, and then one thing led to another, and a four-month little. And thanks for I live downtown. I'm 30 now. You How old 30? were you then? How old were you then? 26. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Sonia's a gorgeous woman. She looks fantastic. She looks better now, too. Yeah, she looks She gets great. better. She looks fantastic. Now, I hate to be crass. I'm not crass. No, I hate to be crass. Oh. You're, no, you're a perfect gentleman. <laughs> Did you all have, get to know each other in the biblical sense? Yes, very. <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> Okay, now just so you know, everything that is said in this room is just between us. Just, it's, this is a secret, right? Just between us. It's, this is all secretive. No one here is going to tell anyone any of this. No tagging. No, no tagging. Yeah, no tagging. I have what? to say. No, but we were joking. <laughs> I'm very impressed that Sonia landed you. Same. You're a great looking Same. guy. Same. Now, did you introduce her to your parents? She met my sister, and that's when my sister was like, get the fuck off that show, don't sign any more contracts. You gotta go. So you're saying you only really broke up with Sonia because of the show, not because of your family or well, yeah, of well, Sonia? <laughs> well, because, yeah, because I wasn't gonna be with her through the show, and Ooh. so then we Okay. I didn't sign anything, and so then she had to. But, but you're saying show you could still be with Sonia to this day but would anybody be with Sonia for more than a couple months I don't know I mean I don't know and was she fun yeah blast she's the best she sounds like she is wow this she's, is... she's great she's really great gal she seems like a great woman yeah I mean wow this is beyond a boot on the ground this is like a boot in the vagina like and man I mean, and so, just also to be honest, I didn't know what I was signing up for. My friends took me out to a drunk dinner at Tall Day, and they were like, we're just going to go to a show, and then we're just going to go to this other place. Okay, what I'm going to give you <laughs> and your friends is this bottle of Miraval. Yeah. You this? deserve it. You're what a soldier. This? It's Rosé. You're one of life's real soldiers. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, you're a great guy, and I'm going to shake your hand, but you're... Thank you for telling that. You yes. seem like a really great guy. Wow. Thank you for your service. Wow, what a you night. You all did the right thing. 
You are horrible friends, and you played it perfectly. Thank you. You, you guys, tricked him. You are bad friends. I don't even know what to say about you four, but thank Good. you. We appreciate it. I can't say enough. Guys. What a night. Nice. You guys seem like you're nonplussed by this. I, is everybody... Guys, I don't think so. You think it's fake? I don't think so. Guys, people are saying fake news. I don't think so. Some people are saying it's fake. Some people are saying it's real. I guess what we're saying is we'll never know. You guys, you've been a wonderful audience. Today. Really have. I mean, we've been through a lot together. We have been. We've heard things that have broken our hearts and have lifted us too. It's been a controversial evening. It's been a disgusting evening on my part. An exciting evening. A sexual evening. Yeah. yeah. April. Yeah. Sorry, I'm looking at April. I don't know what April's saying. <laughs> April. April's getting peace times. <laughs> unsung hero, yes. Unsung hero is right. Indeed, April's an unsung hero. But April all the same. What time? <laughs> thank okay, you. thank you. You know... I know there's four of you here left. Does anyone have something very quick that they feel is very important to add to the discourse? Okay, go okay. ahead. Quickly. Yes. I worked for a private jet company. Okay, listening. And we would always stock the clientele. So a certain someone would always say that she wasn't in it for the money dating this certain someone. Gretchen Christine Rossi. Yeah. Okay. Always on the private jets with the old guy. What was his name? Jeff. That guy? Jeff. Jeff. Jeff had an account. She would fly with him all the time. All the time. During the time when she said that she wasn't in it for the money. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You know... Let's hear one more so we don't have to go on that note of Jeff. Yeah. I don't, hi. Hi. Um, this might be a little bit of a downer, but it, only for me, not for any of the housewives. Okay, okay. great. Okay. <laughs> so, like, maybe 40% of the people here I matched with Jason Hoppy on Bumble. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? I, yeah. What? And I, I thought... I'm Great. He's, he's not bad looking. His pictures weren't bad, but he's very obviously Jason Hoppy. Yeah. So I, we matched and I was like, I'm going to play it cool. Let me text 15 of my friends and just ask them what I should say. So we all came up with, hey. Solid oh, you start. put a real like, think tank together. Solid, right. All, and we're all NYU grads, by the yeah, way. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. As are we. Yeah. As are we. Exactly. So m millennial-ish, great minds think alike. And so we, I said, hey. And he was like, hey, what are you looking for? <laughs> He's like, got a rage underneath, simmering. Well, said, um, I said... That's an angry response. Right. And, what are I you was looking like, for? Well, I'm on a mission. So I was like, um, I am just out of a relationship, so not quite sure. And he was like, okay, great, why don't you give me a call? What? And I said, well, um, why don't you give me a, a call? Yeah. <laughs> Good I'm one. Fashioned. Great. Nice, great. I Sounds like, like it. like you guys are having quite a repartee. Yeah. He was like. It's a real His Girl Friday situation. Right, right. Um, so, so he gave me, me a call. Oh. And I was like, hello, and he was like, Hey, and he was like, so I couldn't really tell from your profile what you're looking for. And I was like, well, what's anyone no. looking for on yeah. Bumble? So again, I said, I yeah. just got out of a relationship, you know, not, I'm not really sure, just kind of feeling things out, you know, like trying to sound like a normal person, but also like, what is Bethany like? What does your kid look like? Like, tell me everything. And, 
And he, so I guess he was right to ask twice. Yeah. It, yeah. it seems like he's a smart man who is. So You're like, I'm not looking like, for that weird cartoon painting you guys hung in your house. <laughs> So he was like, all right, fine. Well, what do you, what do you want to do? And I was like, I, I don't know. Like, we could get a drink and talk. And he goes, you know what? That sounds a lot like dating. No, thanks. <gasps> you should be more clear. But let me ask you, is Bumble for, for fucking? No. Okay, then he's in the wrong. I love that you say, suggested a drink, which is basically like, let's fuck. Uh, is, it, is that what the millennials do? Is that what okay. millennials do? This is a nail color no one would want to wear. But it's a gold, well, maybe. Thank you for that. I'm sorry you didn't get to go out with Jason, but you might be, might be all for the best. Okay, very quickly, you've been waiting very patiently. Can you breeze us through it? I met Sheree at the Women's March. (gasps) Oh, you tweeted at me. Yes, this is what we did. You tweeted at me. Yes. I was at the Women's March. My brother and I went to go get a bite because we were exhausted yeah. from fighting the patriarchy. And um, I'll tell you, sometimes and, you get uh, very hungry. And, and Sheree and her friend were sitting at a table just judging every sign that was going by on the street. Perfect. Love her and so they, much. They like small dogs and babies. And so we we started talking to them. I showed. I had my. My notebook, I have it here with me. And I had this sign. And uh, it's a, I lost my pink Sharpie. It's a picture of a vagina. And she gave me a a pink highlighter that she had. Wow. Wow. Sheree was one of us. I the knew it. The best sign I saw at the entire women's march said, who gonna check me, boo? <laughs> Indeed. Guys, we have come to the end of our show. You've been such an amazing audience. Thank yes. you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you to Anthony. Yes, thank you to Anthony, who's fucking amazing. Who's amazing? April. Hey, this is Jason Sklar, one of the hosts of Sklarbro Country, a podcast here on Earwolf that we love doing. And we have a fantastic episode where we sit down with the hilarious Caitlin Olson. We talk to her about her comedic process. We talk to her about some inside the actor studio, behind the scenes. It's always sunny in Philadelphia stuff. Here's a clip. Do you, are your kids in karate? Ours are in jujitsu. Does Rob take the classes with your kids? He would love to. <laughs> he, would love to. He, he takes jujitsu, like adult jujitsu. <laughs> but like for the first four or five times, he brought his gi and everything in a bag. I'm like, what do you expect is going to happen in there? We had a blast. I think you'll enjoy it. And uh, you can check it out on Earwolf.com, iTunes, or your favorite podcast app. Sklarbro Country. Get into it. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive produced by Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, and Colin Anderson. For more information and content, visit Earwolf.com. Earwolf.